Hi there, back again to share another recipe with you. Today it's one for a gluten-free sherry trifle. Um, I absolutely loved eating trifle before I was diagnosed with celiac and that's the thing now, I sort of like to work out what I can make that replicates things that I enjoyed prior to being diagnosed. Um, this is dead simple to make, it's got different stages, but I just thought if I shared it with you, I've got the recipe already on the blog, so I'll put a link um, below uh, that'll take you back over to the blog, but I'll just crack on and show you how I pop it together. Okay, so for quickness today, I'm going to make the sponge base um, in these little uh, fairy cake cases. And the reason I'm doing that is I've left myself a little bit short of time. And if I didn't crack on and share this video with you today, I don't know when I was gonna do it. Um, so the recipe I've got on the blog actually says about making the sponge in a loaf tin. But by doing, say, in these today, they're gonna cook quicker and they're gonna cool quicker. So I can then obviously crack on and show the complete recipe with you. Um, so yeah, so basically for the sponge, all I'm gonna to do to make that is put, um, I've got um, some Lurpak spreadable butter, full fat in there. I uh, say all the, the quantities is over on the blog and I'll put the link below as I mentioned um, before. So into that, I'm just gonna put some gluten-free self-raising flour, um, I'm using Asda gluten-free self-raising flour today. That's already got xanthan gum in it and it's just got the right amount. If your flour doesn't have any xanthan gum in or you only have plain or all purpose flour, then if you add like a level teaspoon of baking powder, it's plain flour. And then um, if it's not got any xanthan gum, then if you add about a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, then that will be absolutely fine. So yeah, so that's it. But as I say today, just recap, it's gluten-free self-raising that I'm using and it's got the xanthan gum and it's got the baking powder in it. Okay, right, so into the bowl then, I'm going to put some caster sugar and then some eggs. I'll crack them ready and just check those. And then I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla extract into that. Um, this sponge cake recipe um, is so adaptable. You can use this basic recipe that I'm doing for so many different things. Um, and I mentioned before about using the low pack spreadable butter. I love using that and get great results when I make sponge cakes with it. But if you want, you can use your softened butter instead. Um, it's up to you whether you use salted or unsalted, it doesn't matter at all. And also it will work with um, a high fat margarine as well. So, um, so yeah, so there are a couple of options for you. So I'm just gonna whisk this together until it's all creamed in, so just the all-in-one method. Scrape down the side of the bowl just a little bit, just so you get all the mixture and it's evenly mixed together. And just give it another quick whisk. And that's it. Honestly, it's one of the most simple things because I, I am anything for quickness. I love to eat, but I'm anything for quickness. So anything I can do that doesn't take time but still tastes wonderful is this. And very often I'll make a batch of these sponge cakes. Um, I'll either top them with icing or they're great just to pop in the freezer as they are. And then you can use them, you know, put a bit of jam on them and heat them or a bit of syrup or a bit of toffee sauce, you know, anything that's, if you, if you have to be gluten-free, anything that's um, gluten-free, you can top on the lemon curd and then, you know, serve it up custard, things like that. So it just, you can even do like a little fresh cream cake with them. So they're just so adaptable. So I'm just gonna divide the mixture between the cases. And um, that's what's gonna say as well, that vanilla extract, I love that one. Um, and that's naturally gluten-free um, and that's a great one. But just need to check with vanilla extract to make sure that it is gluten-free. Okay, I'll just divide this up. Remember, I need to heat the oven as well. Okay, so I'm heating the oven to um, 170 uh, fan. It's a little bit higher than what I actually say on the um, trifle recipe on the blog. And the reason I'm going a little bit higher with that is because with them being little cakes, they'll cook quite quickly and they don't sort of have to stay in the oven too long. So I'm not worrying about them catching on top. Whereas with the cake, I want them to cook through properly. I'll add a little footnote about that on the, the 
description below. So just divide it as evenly as possible. That's, I say, I've mentioned before, that's where ice cream scoops do come in nice and handy, don't they? Because you can get the exact amount going in there, but um, I do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> me a bit longer for the oven to get to temperature while I'm waiting. I'm just going to have to hang back a little bit with these now until the light goes out. Okay so that's as simple as it is to make the base um, for the trifle so I'm just going to pop those in the oven and show you what they're like when they're done and then I'm going to pop them to one side to cool and I'll show you the next stage what I do as well then. Okay so I've just taken them out of the oven now the little cakes um, they did take just 12 minutes to bake on 170. Um, what I'm just going to do now is just let them cool a little bit and then put them onto the cooling tray so that they'll cool even quicker. Um, and now I'm just going to make some custard so that can be cooling to go on the trifle. So I'll just clear this bit away and I'll show you how I just put the custard together. Right, so how I go about making the custard, um, I make it slightly different to what it says on the packet, but I go how my mum used to make it. So um, I pour just most of the milk into the pan. So it's a pint of milk that I'm using. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that on the back, put a bit too much in. Um, yeah, and then I just reserve like a little bit of milk at the bottom there. And then to the pan, I'm just going to add um, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. I can use, I, I actually, um, because we don't have sugar in our drinks, I just have caster sugar in now all the time. And I use that for everything really now. So, um, so I'll just use caster sugar in there. So I've just got two tablespoons of caster sugar. And then I'm just going to put this on to bring it to a boil. And then I'm just going to blend some of the custard powder with that little bit of milk that's in there. So, so I'm going to put two tablespoons of, two heaped tablespoons of custard powder in there. You can always, if you find that the custard's a little bit too thin, you can add a bit more um, custard uh, powder blended with the milk. I'll just do a little drop at a time um, and then, or if it's too thick, you can always um, dilute it down with the, the milk to, to make it the right consistency. But I'll sort of show you what consistency I aim for and find that it's the best one for when I'm making a trifle. The custard powder I'm using is birds. Um, what I like about this, it's just really simple ingredients in there. So basically it's just saying um, maize starch, salt flavorings and colour and it's no um contains no artificial colours and um, it's just a may contain for milk but birds custard is what I grew up eating and what my mum would use all the time for making um, the custard to go with our puddings and for making trifle. This is actually the trifle recipe I'm sharing with you is um the one that my mum um is based on the one that my mum would always make um, for special occasions and definitely we had one at Christmas as well and that's become my tradition now to make one. Um, generally, I do the base on Christmas Eve and then so the jelly, the sponge and everything on Christmas Eve, leave that in the fridge and I make the custard the day before as well, on, well, on Christmas Eve. And then I assemble the whole trifle then on Christmas Day. So I always feel it just lasts that little bit longer because um, I think the trifle's good to go in the fridge for about two days. So once you see the milk just come into the boil around the edge of the pan, just pour in the um, blended custard powder and, and then just keep stirring. By doing it when you see the milk almost boiling, it cuts down on having to stand over and stir for ages, but you just need to do it vigorously. And if you feel it's sort of going a bit quicker than you are, then take it off the heat for a sec. Okay, that's great there then. Okay, so that's just right for, so it's nice thick custard. Because what I do now, um, it does look quite thick that, but what I do now, I actually um, pour it into a bowl. So I'm just going to do this now. So just pour that straight into a bowl like that. And 
then before a skin can form, I'm just going to pop a piece of grease proof over the top. And just make a little circle, just like I did then, and just press that then into that. And I I've put it in that bowl ready because I'm going to, once that custard goes cold, um, I'm going to whisk that um, back up again. So although it looks quite thick at the moment, that will whisk down really well, um, or whisk up, whichever way you want to think of it. So I'm going to leave the custard now on the side for about half an hour to three quarters of an hour to allow it to cool. So I can then just pop it in the fridge for it to chill completely. Um, and then the next stage is to uh, assemble the base of the trifle. Okay, for now the next stage of making the trifle. So basically building the trifle really, I suppose. Um, so I know it's a little bit controversial, I know not everyone's into it, but I love jelly in my trifle. As I say, it's how my mum made it and that's the way I love to make it. So if you're not into jelly, then you can do the trifle missing the jelly out. Um, you will have like a bit of a different texture if you want to check out a recipe that doesn't use jelly then go with that but I, I say I'm a huge fan of jelly in my trifle and um, normally I would use a raspberry jelly for this because I'm going to be doing a raspberry base for this one but I could only get a strawberry jelly so we're on strawberry jelly so it's a strawberry and raspberry trifle today um but my original recipe I do say about um using a raspberry jelly Okay, so just going to quickly make the jelly up as it says on the packet. The only thing is with it, I'm going to use a quarter of a pint less water to ensure that it sets really well for the trifle. So I'm just going to pour in um, half a pint of boiling water. Okay, yeah, and then just give it a stir with a fork until the cubes dissolve. I sometimes do it in a pan in the oven, um, not on the oven, on the oven. Um, just for quickness, I sometimes do that. But to be honest, there's not much in it really, and, and boiling the kettle is easier. Okay, then the jelly I've used today, that's um, that particular brand, and that's gluten-free, no problem at all for a gluten-free diet. Um, just to obviously always check, just depending which brand of jelly you use, just make sure it's okay for you. So once the jam cubes have all dissolved, just top it up with water. As I say, the pack recommends a pint, but to make sure it sets the trifle, I'm just gonna go for um, making it up to three quarters of a pint. So I'll just top it up with that water now. There we go, I'll just give that a quick whisk around again. Okay, so now for the exciting bit, for putting the trifle together. I'll just try and position this on in a bit of a better way there. That better. Okay, right, so I've got some raspberries there. I've got fresh raspberries, but you can use uh, frozen raspberries. Um, I like how fresh work, but I say totally up to you. And then we're gonna use some of these sponges that I made before. Um, let's see how I can get everything. So some of those. Um, if you don't want to do the sponges, you can buy, I'll just show you, you can buy these, this is Crimbles, um, this is in the UK of course, um, and they are um, in the gluten free section. Um, and it, obviously they're marked up as gluten free because I know they do have other uh, madelines that are not so, but these are, are gluten free. Um, so if you didn't want to bake your own sponge, then these could be used instead for the base of the trifle or any gluten free plain sponge that you pick up could be used as well. Okay, so just gonna use these. So I'm just gonna break enough to, well actually, yeah, I'm gonna break them. So just going to basically just cover the base with sponge, just so it covers um, the base. That's how much I tend to put in there. Of course, as well, if you're not a fan of cake, gluten-free um, cake, then you could just do your trifle, just jelly and fruit. I know that's how my brother-in-law likes his trifle to be, just jelly and fruit. Um, okay, I'm just going to put another one in there now. Okay, 
So I've got six spare cakes that I can either ice or if I'm popping a bag and put in the freezer. Um, so I'm just going to toss the raspberries over the top. There we go. And then I'm going to pop a glass of sherry. Of course, that's optional. Um, I say about 50 ml of sherry, so it's about, um, I don't know whether that's a sherry glass or a port glass, but um, it's my dad, so I thought I'd use that one. So just pour that over. And then just pour over the jelly. Okay. Okay, so with a spoon, I'm just gonna gently press the raspberries into the jelly a little bit. Just sort of make sure they're quite evenly dispersed so that you get nice, even spoonfuls as well. Okay. So that's the first base, or, uh, sorry, the first layer of the trifle, that's all done. Um, I'm just gonna pop a plate over the top of that and leave that to cool a little bit. I mean, it's, to be fair, it's, it's fairly cool anyway. Um, and it'll go in the fridge until it sets. I'm thinking that's gonna be a few hours and then I'll add the rest of the, the layers to the trifle. So I always think this is a real fun part now of making a trifle, assembling it all. So all the bits and pieces have been put together and everything's just ready to assemble. Um, so I've left the uh, trifle in the fridge, so that space the trifle, left it in there for, it's been in there for about two and a half hours and it's all fine there and set and ready for me to add the custard on top. So I'm just gonna peel off this paper and I can see there's like a few bits of um, skin that I'm actually just gonna take off there as well. I mustn't have packed it tightly onto the thing. So if you just spot that's there and just take it off because if you mix that in with the whisk, then that will just go, make it just a little bit lumpy and we don't want that. So that skin should, that paper should have actually stopped this, but it's not on that occasion. So, or this occasion. Okay, as I say, just take that off. So the paper, I was, I was trying to avoid having any waste with skin. Um, anyway, that's there now. So I'm just gonna whisk this in. I'll just get a little bit more there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna whisk this until the custard goes nice and creamy. Okay. So it is slightly thick, the custard on this occasion but it should be okay to just pop on. So I'll just um, hopefully see how this goes. Okay. That should be absolutely fine. So just spread the custard nice and evenly over the top and then we're just going to whip the cream then just to put on the top there. And with the cream, what you want is you don't want it to go too thick so it's nice and silky when you eat the trifle. Okay, so I'm using double cream and as I say, the, what, what you don't want to do is over whisk the cream because then it just goes, the texture changes. So you want the cream to be nice and silky and it's a nice combination then with the custard. So I'm just gonna whip this into the okay, cake, just nice and stuff. So just when you're part way through whipping it, just check to see how it is, because I say you just don't want to over whip it, that's the thing. And that's it. I think I'm gonna stop at that point, because I say it just, Mm. No, I'm going to, I am going to stop at that point because I like it like that when it's nice and silky rather than being too thick. And it's a contrast, especially like today, <laughs> I made my custard a little bit thick. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's get this on and see how this goes. I 
think the best thing to do with a trifle is it's a mouthfeel, isn't it, when you eat a trifle? It's what it tastes like when you've dished it up. And I think this will all work together. I'm thinking the custard's looking slightly thick and that's bothering me a little bit. But I do feel that with the whole thing, it'll just work. So the cream it is just stopping it in time rather than it going too thick because it, it does make so much difference when you're eating it that it's not too thick. It's amazing. I always think it's amazing how much it fills the bowl as well because you start off and you don't think it's going to fill it, but then it does. So, so that's it, all the layers. And then I like to top it off. You can top it off with like toasted almonds or um, grated chocolate. You know, um, but I like to use the flakes because in the UK, flakes are gluten free and just naturally gluten free and have no make and take warnings. So I like to use those. And I tend to just squish them up in the pack a little bit before so it makes it easier for sprinkling on. Um, I say one to two flakes, but it's up to you how much you want to put on top. I've got splashes of cream all over the place at the moment. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I actually think one's going to do it today. I don't know why it would be different any other day, but yeah, one flake's good to go. All right, so that's it. That's a gluten-free sherry trifle, all done and dusted. I'm going to put that in the fridge about half an hour, and then I'll dish it out, and then I'll just show you what it looks like when it's dished out. There you go. I just thought I'd show you what it looks like inside. I was a little bit bothered that the custard bin might have been too thick, so I wanted to check it out, but that looks lovely. Um, I'll just take a bit of that sponge away just so you can just see how it looks as layers inside there as well, if you can see that properly. So yeah, that might be a better portion to look at, but that's what it looks like inside. I'm gonna try it and it's fab so I'm happy to recommend that for you so that's my gluten-free sherry trifle and full recipe is over on my blog thanks for watching bye for now